My name is Green and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today I'm going to be showing you a bunch of building tricks, tips and all sorts of other things to do with the new 1.14 snapshot that's been added to Minecraft. Now there is an awful lot added here and the goal of this video is not to showcase what's there. I'm going to briefly glance over everything that's been added just so you know. But the main thing is we're going to go over how we might use these things creatively. So let's dive straight in, shall we? The first thing is there have been a bunch of flowers added. The first one is the Wither Rose. My personal favorite, as you know, I like anything that can be used as a trap. If you stand over it, it does a wither effect on you, and that hurts quite a lot. There's also Cornflower and Lily of the Valley, two very good looking flowers indeed. Next up is a very interesting block, the Bamboo, which is actually a plant or a grass, and it actually behaves like one as well. So if I take Bamboo, I was under the impression that it might be a little bit like a fence where you place it down and it sits nicely in the middle of the block It's not the case because it is a plant it takes up random locations on the block So it's not uniform at all meaning our uses in building are a bit limited But it does make it extra pleasing to the eye for actual uses of bamboo so we'll come back to that one a bit later on. The next addition is a loom block, which is a brand new block meant to make making a banner very easy indeed, as it was a little bit complicated before with all of the crafting involved. But I'm more interested in the way this block looks. It's got a unique texture, very unique texture, and we'll come back to that later on as I've got a few ideas on how to use this. And now, the biggest thing in this update is a bunch of staircases and slabs have been added to the game. So I'm going to go over each of these in turn. Now some of them haven't had the wall added to them, just the slabs and the staircases. But nonetheless, this will make building very, very interesting. There's gonna be all sorts of things that can be done with these in a variety of ways. So the first one is obviously mossy stone brick. The next one is polished granite, which looks pretty cool. We've got red sandstone, which also looks pretty good. They've also added polished diorite. A new sandstone texture, which is very interesting, we'll talk about this a little bit later on. Mossy cobblestone, endstone brick, which is a good choice. Stone slabs and stone stairs, which was a bit of a surprise to me. Smooth quartz, which looks almost identical to normal quartz. <laughs> Granite and red nether brick, along with some polished andesite, normal diorite, and then we've had some walls added to blocks that already had staircases and slabs. So we've now got stone brick walls, we've now got brick walls itself, which makes a lot of sense, and we've also got prismarine walls as well. So that makes an awful lot of sense. And we've also had different color signs added to the game as well. Interestingly, they have a texture change at the bottom so that the bark is holding up the sign. I think this is a personal preference thing. I could go either way, to be honest with you. But we now have spruce signs, birch, acacia, jungle, and dark oak, which is a pretty big deal because we've always been limited to oak signs. So this is going to expand our building abilities very much. Now, there has been a texture change as well from version 2 to version 3. I made a video a while ago comparing the default to version 2. And now, at the end of the video, I am going to be comparing version 2 to version 3, just in case you wanted to see what has changed. Alright, so let's move on to the most important thing. How do we use these blocks in a new scenario? Now, I'm not going to be doing any details on the new slabs and staircases, as that's more of just a general enhancement to the building palette. I want to focus on the new blocks. And the first one is the loom. Like I said, this has a very interesting texture, and my first thought was piano keys. So you can now make a very good looking piano, and it's also utilizing the new dark oak signs to cover the, up the front of it as well. So this actually does look like a load of keys, but then I thought there's actually another way that this could be used. The loom could be used as the strings at the back of the piano, and then we could use daylight sensors like I have done before when I've made a piano. And I think both designs work very well, but my personal preference is the first one. The loom can also be used as the back of it has a very distinct texture and this goes really well with bookcases. Now the reason is it mimics the same grid pattern that you get on bookcases. So I thought putting it at the bottom, adding a spruce button, 
It looks like they're a bunch of drawers, and this could be used in all kinds of furniture. But it also, if you just put it in with the bookcases, it looks like the books have been removed from the shelf, which is another really unique way to use this block. Moving on, there's even more ways to use this. You can use it as a wall trim, both the front of it, which looks very much like a letterbox. That's also another idea that could be done and at the bottom as a wall trim. There's only a handful of blocks that you can do this with, one of which being the quartz pillar block. Normally we would use quartz pillar in a more modern setting like so, but the trim here works in multiple scenarios such as this modern setting. But if you look up, the bottom of the loom block actually has a really unique texture as well. It does make an incredible ceiling block. So that's something to consider as well. And it wouldn't be right if I didn't include some kind of barbecue. So this obviously looks like a grill. It's a bit triggering that it doesn't quite match up, that it, you know, doesn't just go straight in line. That would have been too perfect. But if you just place them opposite each other, you can create a pretty convincing looking grill. Surround it with a bunch of blocks and you've got yourself a barbecue. Also, you can put bamboo in a potted plant and we'll come back to that a bit later as well. One of my personal favorites of today is the garage door. So again, using the back of the loom, placing a bunch of them, and it's not too expensive to make this block, so I can see it being used as a decoration very, very easily. A button in the middle, and you've got yourself a half open garage door. Just imagine that you could see the bonnet of a car poking through there. That could look very, very convincing. Now moving on, this cave is to show you that you can use the stone slabs and the stone staircases to really improve your caves if you want to make some custom terrain. Now there are so many slabs and staircases added to the game that terraining is going to be forever transformed. There's even smooth sandstone added to the game so you'll be able to terrain with sand which is a bit of a game changer. Along with granite and andesite being added in as well you can create really convincing cave works that have a lot more shape and diversity. Moving on to the bamboo tricks. Now bamboo is a really good looking plant. So you can imagine that it's going to be very useful for decoration. So I've made a little pathway here and some bamboo on the left. And you can imagine how any walkway or any sort of tranquil space could be used with bamboo. And also the loom makes a fantastic grate or grill. And I also added some water here to kind of illustrate that, you know, it all goes together really well. And I feel like it all fits. Moving on, I did mention earlier that you could put a bamboo in a potted plant, but if you add just a block of leaves over the top, you've got yourself a proper stem. We used to have to use cactus, but it never looked quite right. This one looks way more at home because it's even got a little leaf in there as well. So that's good. You could take this even further, and I know that the potted plant in the middle is a bit weird, but with a bit of imagination, you can see that this works as a small little plant. Uh, hi. Dom. <laughs> Dom is here. Okay. Well, you can stack you can stack bamboo plants one on top of the other. Now, Dom here is going to be my assistant today, which I assume is why he's got a waistcoat on and, <laughs> and a tie. <laughs> um, so he's going to be my assistant today. Now, you can stack bamboo on a potted plant. Now, this looks really weird, and I thought this could be worked as a room divider. But, like I said, it does look odd. But while we were experimenting with this particular setup, we found something incredibly weird that may interest some of you. So Dom's going to be my little guinea pig here. So what I'm gonna do is place a bunch of blocks here as a little bit of a wall. Now I'm gonna place, if I place Dom Rao can't get out, there's no way, but as a human, we can walk in and out of these bars as if they are a very bad jail. So very easy to get in and out. Now, if I place a bunch of husks here, something very strange happens. They can't get through, even if Dom sort of looks around and stuff. And sometimes they even get through the center of these blocks and they still hug it. They will damage him if he gets too close, but sometimes they'll break through. Let's see if we can push one through. Even though he's on the other side of this, he just loves the bamboo for some reason and they won't go after Dom. How bizarre is this? So yeah, that's a very odd thing that happens with that. I don't know what you could be used that for, and it's not always 100% reliable, but it works. 
And also you could use this as your regular oven grill as well. It doesn't have to be a barbecue. You could have an extractor fan over the top and you could use the loom as a grill as well. You can cover it up with a couple of item frames and then add a couple of pressure plates in there as well and it looks like handles. Moving on, we've got a few more bamboo tricks, but these are more just decorative. I just want to illustrate how beautiful this bamboo plant is and where it can be used. So this is just your very simple man-made river, and it's also used a lot of the new slabs and staircases, along with some of the sand ones as well. You can see that the smooth sandstone slab actually just looks like a half slab of sand, so this could be used quite a lot. So you can see that you can make some really pretty things here, and you can even mix it in with a bunch of reeds as well. But in my opinion, if I had to choose between the two, I'm going for the bamboo over the reeds any day. And of course, you can make a bamboo forest, a proper bamboo forest. Now I'm sure a lot of you were expecting it and what we've done is we've made sure that the bamboo is all at different heights and stopped with a string on the top. And that kind of gives it a lot of variation. Of course, you could just have it grow all to the same height to make it more realistic, but I feel like this looks a lot better. Now, every single block here, except for a couple with some tall grass in, has some bamboo in it. And you can see that some of them you can walk through and others you can't because of the randomly generated placement. And we also have pandas added to the game. Now, I wasn't going to cover the mobs, but oh my goodness, pandas are in the game as well. So I thought I'd mention that while we're here doing the bamboos as well. <laughs> this is an awesome way to decorate any sort of garden of some kind these little planks and stuff there's so many options but this vibrant green is going to become very useful in garden making moving on is another japanese garden style build but this time it's less intense so just used again as a decoration tool we've got some very tall stripped dark oak log walls along with some trap doors and buttons and it looks really authentic this looks absolutely beautiful so these blocks are a bit of a game changer for gardens along with the new flowers as well they're going to make it incredibly pretty moving on is another bamboo example now this is obviously a modern build i assume this is now dom rao's house as he is here <laughs> this is where you can use bamboo inside just even putting it by the windows you can still see through it enough so that you've got a nice a lot of light coming through but the vibrant green really makes this work now there's also a couple of new of the textures used diorite and polished diorite but we'll go over some of the textures a bit later on so that's it for the building tricks with the bamboo and the loom which made up the majority of the building tricks and tips section however i'm playing on java edition but on Bedrock Edition, and indeed in the future of 1.14 updates, there's going to be a new block called Scaffolding added as well. So I'm going to hop on over to the Bedrock Edition to have a little experiment with those blocks as well. Okay, so as you can see, I'm in the beta 1.8011 of the Bedrock Edition. This is where we have access to the scaffolding block. So this kind of future proofs the video a little bit because this block should be coming out on Java at some point. And boy, oh boy, is it very, very interesting. And I think we can assume that it will work roughly the same way and hopefully will look exactly like this because this in itself is interesting. But you can place scaffolding blocks by clicking the bottom of it and it builds on top. So this means that you can travel through it upwards like a ladder but also build as you don't need to jump anymore. You just build and right click, go up and up and up and up and up and up and up for as long as you can. This is a really fantastic block. Normally we've been using dirt scaffolding, so I can't wait to get my hands on this because it's so useful for building, not only just as a building block by itself, but as an aid to building as well. So I'm gonna stop that now, but if you if I keep, oh wow, how long is it? Yeah, there we go, we're at the top now. So. The interesting thing about this is that you can also use this to go shift and fly down it like it's a ladder. You can stop at any point. But if we fall down, much like sand, this is a falling block. And if I remove the bottom one, it all goes tumbling down. That looks really magical. That looks insanely magical. Jeez, how many did I do? And the last one. So before we get into the other ways that you can use this block, particularly for building, I want to show you something kind of interesting with it. So I just showed you how you can travel up this block by holding down spacebar. Uh, but 
I think that this could potentially be a game changer to parkour because like ladders, you can get on it, but this is so much more malleable. I can just hold down, press spacebar, then I can turn around and go up another one. This could be really, really interesting for parkour makers and parkour map makers. This could be really, really cool. Now, I didn't actually get enough time to spend with this block, not nearly enough as I'd like. So one of the first things that came to mind, of course, was a chair. And this is just a normal door on the back of a scaffolding block and it looks like a four-legged chair. Also works brilliantly with a trap door of any kind, that is. You just place it on the top and then right-click it to open it and you got yourself a chair. If you close it, you've got a table. Multi-use. You can, of course, make the table a lot bigger by adding more than one scaffolding block. Adding some of these on the top works as well. I've just They're absolutely brilliant for anything with four legs. There's nothing quite like it in the game, which is a bit of a game changer in itself. And of course, you can make yourself a little table as well, but instead of a trap door, you can, of course, put a carpet on the top. These are the things that are very simple that came to mind. Simple furniture, chairs, tables, that kind of thing. But then we get into things like a torch stand. This is something that looks absolutely fantastic. I can imagine this being used. Because you can see through it, it gives you that sort of airiness. And then you can put anything like a fire or a lamp. And it could make a pretty decent lamppost, I feel. This is a really good temporary structure. And of course, house on stilts. I didn't actually spend very long on this. This is just a proof of concept, which is why it doesn't look very good. I made the entire thing out of trap doors, except for this little ceiling here. So that's kind of interesting. Now, it would have been fun if trap doors actually didn't float like they do now. They used to just need a block to sit on, but they don't anymore, because if you had deleted all of these, the whole thing could have come tumbling down together, but now the house just floats. So that's another concept, house on stilts. I'm sure that will work at some point. And if you place a load of them together, this looks a lot like a cat jungle gym. Gives you something for the animals to climb on. It could be a dog, but more likely a cat. So let's spawn one in. There we go. Oh, beautiful. And, uh, I... <laughs> Out of everything that I was expecting today, this was not one of them. So if you tame a cat, is that just a one-off or does... No, no. <laughs> oh, the cats are broken. I, I can't even punch them. Oh, there we go. Oh, you can punch them back to normality. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Have a fish. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to... I don't want to leave you like this either, so I'm going to try and... Punch. There we go. I am so sorry, cats. Like I was trying to say, this makes a brilliant cat jungle gym. Mixed in with some fences and some carpets on the top. You can see it. This would work in the corner of a room very easily. But then there are even more simple things, like uh, just a bit of furniture. This looks like a stack of shelves, and you could even throw a few items on the top, as they will stay there. So if we move on to the next one, there's a couple of things. I've added just a normal chair here, but you can actually place water inside of the bamboo scaffolding. So that's something that's really interesting. So it could be used as a drain or a sink, or indeed as a drain in the shower as well. It works really quite well. These cats are following me everywhere. And lastly, I had an idea to do like a TV, because again, you can see through these. There's not many blocks like this where you can see through it. And I thought that perhaps this isn't the best design in the world, but it could be used in some way. You can see how it outlines here. And behind, I've got a bunch of scaffolding making it so it's a square. Now, there's a few other traits of this. Now, obviously, I can just right-click the bottom and it builds it up. But you can also place these on the side. And then they become a bit of a cuboid, Rubik's Cube-style thing. But they also fall off if detached. But you can only get so far as well. If I keep placing them, eventually they fall. You can only attach it for so far. So, this is... Something that I need a lot of time to experiment with, and I honestly didn't have enough time to do all the tricks and tips on this particular block. However, I feel like in the future when this joins Java Edition, I will be able to come up with an entire video dedicated to the tricks that we can do with this. This is an insanely unique block. So that's it for the scaffolding block. Let's head back onto Java to continue this video. Now, let's move on to some of the uses for these blocks that are more practical than aesthetic. So the first one is traps, of course. The wither flower does damage. And 
Although there are way better ways to kill someone faster in Minecraft, such as lava or simply fall damage for instant death, the Wither Rose offers something a little more interesting. So Domrau is going to be my guinea pig for today. Let's TP him up here. Okay, so what I've got here are two pillars, one small and one extraordinarily large. Now the reason is that you get momentum the further you jump down. Now this is meant to be a very fun trap, maybe even not intended to actually kill someone. There are way better ways to do it. I'm just experimenting here. So if Domrau jumps in, yeah, it's a very slow way to the wither flowers, and he could probably destroy those cobwebs with a sword very easily. But eventually, he does get to the flowers, and he does go down. However, if you made an extraordinarily tall and deep hole, you could make something a bit more interesting. But of course, fall damage will always be the better choice here. Now, if Domrau jumps in this example, which is basically the equivalent of sea level to bedrock, it, it takes a while to go, he gets enough momentum that he takes damage from the flower instantly. And it still takes a while for him to go down, but I think that's all part of the fun of this little trap here. But if they don't have a sword, this is a guaranteed very fun trap. Something else added in this update is the crossbow. Now, these are really fun to use. They are instant fire, and they have a really sweet animation. Like, look how menacing that is. Just the, just look, someone dead in the eye, and animate up. They know what's coming. But I found something, well, a little bit overpowered in my opinion using the crossbow. So, <laughs> I'm going to shoot the apple above Domrau's head. Instant damage. Now I found a little bit of an exploit, I feel. So if I hold down right click and press one to nine very quickly, I can fire so many arrows very quickly. And I only fired six out of the potential nine and it decimated Dom very, very quickly. The only problem is you have to load them all up again. But imagine if you had this in your inventory in a fight, you could spam this so quickly. And I imagine it works with the scroll wheel as well. It does. You can just scroll through. You don't have to press the numbers at all. Let's do that again, shall we? <laughs> it's so much fun to use the crossbow. But unfortunately, it does seem to have a little bit of an exploit with just how much damage you can deal incredibly quickly. Having said that, with a bit of armor on, that wouldn't be enough to finish them off. All right, let's put those back for now. It's not only damage dealing that has been added in this update, but an extremely odd looking farm choice that can be added as well. One of the features added in this new update is that if you place shears in a dispenser, like so, and activate it with redstone, you can see there's a puff of smoke coming out, but there's one coming here with a coat. It will instantly shear the sheep. Now, this farm design was originally concepted by XI Zume and the farm design is by Mumbo Jumbo, and of course I asked him for permission to show this. If you want to see exactly how he made this, go and check out his video in the description. So, the way this works is that we have layers and layers of grass, and we conveyor belt the sheep all the way along it, and they have a chance to munch on this grass to get their coats back. So we're just trying to increase the surface area of grass here, and you need so many sheep here. The sheep aren't going by their will. The entities are pushing them along in a giant sheep conveyor belt, and then the water trickles them along and pushes them into the dispenser that's on a very simple hopper clock. Another idea that I had is using the wither rose to farm things. Now, we do have magma blocks that also cause damage, but this is slightly different, I suppose. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but if mobs do spawn on an area with wither roses on, I'm not sure if they do, or maybe you can have platforms, this could be an effective way of killing them without any server lag as well. I don't know for sure, but it's just an idea, and then you can have a simple collection system underneath. So this is maybe a game changer for potential farm makers. So those are a few of the thoughts that I had on how to use some of these things in the new update. But there's also a bit of feedback that I'd like to give while I'm here as well, because there are a few things that I was hoping for that didn't quite happen. And there's a few things that I added that I don't particularly like. As you can see, the signs have a very neon white text on them. 
and I've already seen lots of opinions on this in the negative. I personally am just a little bit disfavorable to it. So I don't really mind them that much, but they do stand out that little bit too much. But I believe this is one of the things that will change, so it's not too much of a worry. I'm not too worried about it at all. Now, this is something that I haven't seen people mention. Now, there were many, many walls added to the game. And I was a little disappointed to find out that they didn't change how they connect. As it stands at the moment, if you place a wall like this, it just puts the pillars at the end and has a nice connection all the way through and it looks very clean. But as soon as we add walls on top of each other, the pillars are fine, but as soon as we add them on the rest of it, we get this rather unpleasant effect of having pillars all the way through. Now, my hope is that this lovely clean connection all the way will travel downwards and remove all of these pillars and just be a really clean wall. That would make this so much better. So I'm hoping that maybe that could be something that happens in the future. The next thing that I wanted to give feedback on is that Wither Roses can be placed on magma blocks. However, they don't deal damage at the same time. If you go into survival mode, only the wither effect will take place, and if you remove it, then only the magma will hurt you. So, I was thinking, if it's possible, it would be great to have both of these attack you or damage you simultaneously to increase the rate of killing mobs in the farms. So that could be a good idea as well. And the last thing is the inventory. So, lots of new blocks have been added over the last few updates, but their position in the creative menu hasn't really been thought through too much, if you ask me. Indeed, in the Bedrock Edition, it looks a lot cleaner, and it's a lot more intuitive to find what you're looking for. But here, for example, here's Oak Slab, but the Oak Stairs are over here. But then, the rest of the wooden stairs are all the way down here, along with a bunch of the new things. So, this is just a chronological addition of each block. So. But for some reason, dried kelp is right at the end. It, this just doesn't make much sense to me, the position of all of these blocks. So I would really love to see these placed a bit more intuitively, because normally, if you're building with oak planks, not only do you want oak planks, but you want to get the oak slab, and you also want to get the oak stairs, and maybe even the oak fence as well. But as it stands, I've got to scroll down, grab each one individually, go over to the decoration blocks and get them just to get all of the same ones. If these were all in a line in the in, in the creative menu, this would be so much quicker. Now there's one more thing that's been added and that's new mobs. Now I already showed off the panda briefly, but like I said, this isn't a showcase video. I'm not just showing the new content in here, but these guys are really, really cool. This is the pillager beast and these are the pillagers. And as you can see, it's pretty horrendous looking. It goes and charges down any villagers that it can find. And it makes, yeah, makes chain noises. It's pretty terrifying. And then these guys are the raider versions and they hold crossbows. They look awesome as well. But I thought I'd just mention that these guys have been added as well, just in case you have no idea what's in the new 1.14 update. I'm very excited to see where this goes. Now, I've saved the texture review for last, as I know that this probably doesn't interest everybody, but if you want to compare version 2 for version 3, I'm about to go over it now. Now, this isn't every single block. I played a very intense version of Spot the Difference between this and the resource pack that was available a few months ago. And this is the list of the blocks that have had a substantial change to them. And we're going to compare them and perhaps give an opinion here or there. But before we do, I just want to say it's mostly a matter of preference at this point. There might be the odd block which you feel more passionately about, but Jasper, the guy that's been doing all of these textures, is so insanely talented. I really like pretty much everything that he makes. It's just a case of do you like red apples or green apples? Yes, they taste different, but they're both apples and they both taste good. So it's not so much about which one's better, but which one you prefer. So just bear that in mind that it's mainly just opinion at this point. And this is certainly only my opinion, and you may disagree with me. Okay, so let's get into it. Version 2 is on the top, as you can see, and version 3 is on the bottom. Version 3 is the most recent release. 
Granite, as you can see, went from more and more soft to a harder line, and that seems to be the case with all of these rocky kind of blocks. You can see that Diorite went from a more soft palette to many more bits of like darker greys in there, and I actually prefer version 2 on all of these, except for the Andesite, which I think is a significant improvement as it removes a lot of the blue elements out of it and it looks more grey and fits better with the stone. Cobblestone seems to have like a bit of a darker tinge. It's a little subtle change, but I quite like it. The wood is the one that I would like to bring up the most, I think, because as you can see, there is a quite a big difference there. The version 3 seems to be flatter and you can see the planks more clearly, but version 2 almost seems a bit more 3D in a sense, that it looks like the wood is slightly curved on the shading. I actually prefer version 2, but I also really like version 3. Sand is also something I would have brought up if Jasper hadn't already tweeted that it was going to change. There's no point commenting on it too much. Logs has had a very subtle change to it. I wonder if you can see it's had a slight change of tone and it seems like the lines that go down vertically have become a bit more solid and hard lined and I actually quite like it. It makes it look like the bark's kind of peeling off it and all of them have had a very subtle change, but I think it's quite favorable. I do quite like it a lot. Like I said, some of these are more subtle than others, and the log is definitely just a very slight tweak, so you can't have too strong of an opinion on it. Wet Sponge has had one, but I don't actually use Wet Sponge in buildings, so I honestly don't really mind what it looks like too much. For the glass, I actually like either. It's had a very simple change. I don't really have to comment on it too much. Lapis Lazuli has had more of a deep color into it. Having held Lapis, I actually know that it has a really deep blue, so I actually quite like this. It's a bit more accurate to real life. Sandstone, kind of like the sand, has also had a really deep change, but like I said, he's already tweeted that this is likely to change in the future, so best to disregard. I imagine that V2 will take the more favorable approach. Gold's had a slight shift. I actually quite like the change here. And then we're back onto the wood and the wood planks. And again, you can see that version 3 has a slightly more flat approach to it. And again, think that wood is one of those ones where it's just your personal preference. Again, I like the version 2, but if version 3 was to stick around, I wouldn't be that upset to be honest with you. Building with planks is one of the biggest blocks that we use, so it is quite important to get this right, but like I said before, this is just a personal preference thing at this point. Moving on to some of the other slabs. You can see that stone bricks had a bit of a change, along with nether bricks had a bit of a tone change. Some of these are so subtle you really have to check really hard. I mean, I played such a big, like, spot the difference going between the two resource packs, and I lost my mind doing it sometimes. Dark Prismarine seems to have had a bit of a tone change as well. I, quite, again, quite like it. Bookshelves, again, seem to have had one, or maybe that's one that didn't change at all. Yeah, it looks like it didn't change at all, and I've lost my marbles. <laughs> Obsidian is a change that I particularly don't like. I definitely prefer version 2 on that. And Diamond Ore, it might be very subtle, but you can see version 2 has sort of a glow around it, and version 3 sort of doesn't. I think version 3 is closer to default on that one. Netherrax had a slight change, again, not too much of an opinion on that. I prefer version 2 of the Diamond, but I wouldn't be upset with version 3 because it matches some of the other gems. Cobblestone Stairs, we've already gone over Cobblestone, it's got a bit more of a harder texture. The Nether Brick seems to have had just a slight tone change of some kind, not too massive but it's very unnoticeable. The emerald, again, you can see that the glow around the gems has been removed, and I think that's very Minecraft to have it without the glow, to be honest with you. You can also see that emerald blocks had quite a significant change, with version 3 looking more in line with the gold blocks and the diamond blocks with that square pattern in the middle. This is not something that we use for building particularly often, so as long as you know what it is and it looks fairly good, I don't see any problem with any of those changes. We've got nether quartz in there. Again, it's a subtle change, but I quite like it. And moving on, you can see that the ice has had a slight change. I personally prefer version 2 in this case because it, it looks more smooth. And when I think of, you know, giant icebergs and stuff like that, I really do think of a smooth ice. Dark Prismarine has had a slight change in shade. I actually prefer the greener to the more blue. 
and you can see more of the staircases that we've kind of gone all over already with the texture changes. I just want to point out that the andesite is one of my personal favorites as it has removed that blue tinge. It's going to synergize really well with the other gray blocks and gray is a very big color in Minecraft as there's so many of them. And we can kind of go over some of the other ones if you've already seen them but want to second opinion. You can see that the granite has changed quite a lot and the diorite again. I think they've been made more accurate to real life and I've actually got those rocks in my hand in my house so I know that they look more accurate but I think in the context of Minecraft they might look better as a version 2 edition. So that's something that's hard to weigh up, accuracy or how they fit into Minecraft and that's kind of hard to balance out I think. A lot of these textures coming up, apart from the last couple, will be just variants of the ones that we've already seen, but sometimes it's good to look at them several times over before you form an opinion, but most importantly I think it's it's key that you look at these textures in the context of your builds of a Minecraft world. Looking at these individually like I am is probably not the best way to do it, but it's certainly the most time efficient way to do it, so you can compare the previous to the new, but it's really important to look at your current Minecraft houses as well and make sure that it all fits. You can also see that the iron bars have had a shade, they actually look more shiny and new, I quite like that, and the glass panes has had a similar change to the glass that was there before. So whatever your opinion may be, I think we can all agree that this looks fantastic. So that was basically everything that I wanted to cover in the new snapshot 114 update. Now this was the very first one, so there's undoubtedly much, much more to come with this update. I'm very happy with Minecraft, where it is at the moment, where it's going. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I think the community's really coming together. I think the texture changes are great. I think these new blocks look fantastic and can be used in multiple ways. And I just want to say a big thank you to Tenku, Simozi, and Pajazzle, and of course Domrao himself, for helping me put this video together. These sorts of videos take an awful long time to make. So, if you'd like to let me know what you thought in the comments below, what was your favourite thing, what was your favourite design, have you got any ideas on how to use this yourself, please, please, please let me know down below. Thank you very much again for watching, and goodbye!